All right, so as promised, we're going to do this same example again, only this time we're going to use the second form uh, for the limit definition of the derivative. Um, either one is fine. They're, they're equivalent. They, they give you the exact same result. Um, depending on the context, sometimes one is more convenient than the other. Um, the only other thing we changed is we, we moved the point to, uh, to x equals 3. So the graph's not so accurate anymore, but that's all right. We can... It's, it's just here to give us some idea of what we're looking at anyway. So this time we need f of 3. So we have 3 times 3 squared, 5 times 3, minus 7. So much bigger number this time, 27 plus 15 minus 7, we have 35. Okay, so y value is 35 this time. Okay, and just like last time, in order to get the equation of the tangent line, we need the slope, which is f prime of 3. All right, so using this version here, we're going to set c equal to 3. h is just h, right? So h is actually the, the limit variable in this version of the definition. So we go f prime of 3, be the limit. h going to 0, f of 3 plus h minus f of 3 over h. Okay, so let's plug in our function and let's be very careful when we do. Um, a lot of people get caught up on function notation here, plugging the 3 plus h in. Um, they'll make mistakes like maybe the 3 get, or the h gets on the outside. Um, somehow, sometimes the h ends up in the wrong place. So we have to be very careful. Remember that function notation means, you know, whatever is inside the parentheses here, that's the argument for your function. That's what replaces x in the definition of the function. So we need 3 times 3 plus h squared, right? plus 5 times 3 plus h minus 7. So there's f of 3 plus h. And then we have to subtract off f of 3, which is 35. So let's squeeze that in, put a little line here so we don't get mixed up. And the whole thing has to be divided by h. So for this type of problem, there, there's, there's a bit of a trade-off depending on the type of algebra that you're comfortable with. Um, in the last one, we ended up having to do a bit of factoring, right? There was a quadratic we had to factor, um, but it's okay. We know how to factor quadratics. It wasn't so bad. Uh, here, we have to expand, right? Because we have this square. We have to square a binomial. We have to multiply the 5 through. And, and so things get maybe a little bit messy. Again, maybe we do a bit of scratch work so we don't have to do too many steps. So with limits, we say, okay, what do we have? 3 times, so if we square 3 plus h, again, be careful, we're not just squaring the two terms. It's 3 plus h times 3 plus h. We need to use FOIL. So 3 squared is 9. Uh, 3 times h is 3h plus another one, right? 6h plus h squared. Okay, and so this is what we get from doing... 3 plus h times 3 plus h, which is 3 plus h squared. Okay. 5 times 3 plus h minus 7. And we clear the brackets. So 3 times 9, 27. 3 times 6 is 18h plus 3h squared. 5 times 3. 15 plus 5h minus 7. So we get 35 plus 18h, oh, plus 5h. Um, uh, we'll simplify down here. Um, plus 3h squared. Okay, so we'll put all that in.
So we have 35 plus, 18 plus 5 is 23h, 3h squared, minus 35, all divided by h. And you'll notice that the constant terms cancel, right? 35 minus 35, they cancel out. Everything that's left in the numerator depends on h. Um, and of course, that has to happen because we, we see up here that it's going to be a 0 over 0 limit, right? If there was a constant left over, we wouldn't get a 0 in the numerator. The limit wouldn't exist. We wouldn't have a derivative, right? So if, if you ever find a constant left over up top, you've done something wrong, okay? The constant should always cancel out. Everything should be a multiple of h. Um, and since everything's a multiple of h, it's a little bit easier now, right? We can cancel the 35s. We can factor an h from what's left over. Okay, we get h times 23 plus 3h. Didn't really need those extra parentheses, so well, over h. And now that we factored out that h, we can cancel it with the one on the bottom. We can let h go to 0. And we get an answer of 23 for our slope, right? And so I think, you know, historically, I think it was this step that really annoyed certain people, right? Now we kind of, we understand how limits work. We can do this. But uh, there, people were really uncomfortable with this idea that, well, you know, in a limit, h is not 0, right? We, we specify that in the definition that h is not actually equal to 0. So we're allowed to cancel this, right? Because it's not 0. Oh, but then we're going to set it equal to 0 to get our answer. We're like, how can it be 0 and not 0 at the same time? Um, well, we understand this now through the machinery of limits. We can, we can make sense of this. We get our answer. We've got our slope. Uh, we've got our point, right? x is x naught is 3, y naught is 35. And so the tangent line. is going to be y equals 35 plus 23 times x minus 3. And again, you can simplify that and put it into y equals mx plus b form um, if you feel that you have to, but, but you don't have to. You can leave it like that.